Immediately um, after Hurricane Irma, uh, the Premier established what we uh, call a 100-day committee um, to look at what are the priority areas um, and make recommendation um, that the government can implement um, as part of the whole recovery process. <clears throat> Coming out of that decision, a number, a number of committees were established, one of which was a committee basically focused on the financial services sector and what the sector needed to do in order to recover, um, headed by uh, Mr. Robert Mathavius. Uh, coming out of those deliberation, uh, a decision was made to establish a further subcommittee, which I chair, uh, which was going to look at um, uh, job opportunities within the sector, um, given its level of um, uh, preparedness after the after the hurricane, um, you know, job opportunities within that sector that can be extended to persons who were seeking employment and may have been displaced in other um, other subsectors, particularly the tourism subsector. Um, so this committee was established uh, to really look at that. And once the committee was established, we we extended the remit to also look at entrepreneurial opportunities that exist within the subsector and um, really with the objective of trying to decide how we marry those opportunities within the sub in the subsector, both in terms of employment and entrepreneurial activities with, with people, decision makers, and with persons that may can able to facilitate those opportunities in the sector. Uh, so that's the, 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 the basis and the genesis of it. Um, as Saskia said, on, on March 1st, we will have our first public event, and it's really a registration event um, where persons who are seeking employment in the industry uh, can come and there will be a panel that really gives them an overview of what the industry would look like if they were planning to come into the industry from an employment perspective and also give a general overview of what are some of the opportunities that exist within the subsector that entrepreneurs can prepare themselves for. Um, then on the 22nd of March, we'll have the main event uh, where we actually bring job seekers and employers, decision makers in the same room to explore job opportunities. And then we'll have a number of persons who are seasoned in the industry to really explain and share some ideas of what some of the opportunities that exist within the industry. Um, persons who are entrepreneurs, um, who are already servicing the industry or looking in ways that they can expand their service to the industries uh, can come in and, and on the 22nd and, and, and really begin to make the connections um, uh, at that particular expo that will be held on the 22nd. Uh, it will be held on the 22nd. Um, right now we are looking at the arbitration center as a, as a possible location. Uh, we will finalize that and, and share that with the public. Uh, it will be an all-day event. Um, and so um, in, individuals will have opportunity to really explore uh, the job opportunities and the entrepreneurial act, uh, um, opportunities at that particular point in time. If I could go back to the next week, um, that is on Thursday, that, that event is going to be at Aromas. And it's, as was said, it's going to be a registration. We are encouraging persons to come out. Uh, me talked about the the panelists. It'll be a very interesting panel. We're going to have uh, a very senior manager, uh, in fact, a, a, a managing director of a firm. We're going to have a, a, a lawyer who has spent a few years in the the um, Asia Pacific region, and she'll talk about her experience there. Mm -hmm. We'd have a a self-employed person in the financial sector, financial services region, and we'll have a, a senior administrator as well. So these people will talk about their experiences um, in the financial services area. And uh, as was said, people will be encouraged to bring out their, bring their, their CVs with them. We'll, you know, look at them, help them to improve on these CVs and, and match them with with potential uh, employers, and that event, as Mead said, will take place on the 22nd. So we're very excited about that. 
that event on the both on the first of, of March and later on on the sorry on the first of March yes and then later on on the 22nd of March at the arbitration center absolutely uh, so um, you know we, we would like to encourage the public um, employers um, you know as I'm out there and I'm speaking on TV <laughs> uh -huh. um, employers that actually have opportunities within the financial services sector um, we're asking them to really take the opportunity to meet talent that's already existing in the BVI um, and you know take that talent and bring it on board where you have opportunities because we know particularly within within the sector and all sectors there are people that have left the territory um, and may not be returning and that has created a void um, we know some of the employers would like to employ people but may not have the physical premises but at least they can identify that resource now and then um, you know be able to 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 be able to employ that resource um, you know, during the time when when they actually have premises um, um, there and then there are a number of um, entrepreneurs that um, maybe have been exploring opportunities in one particular area but now they have an opportunity to focus um, you know what they want to bring to the to, to the market in the financial services sector and I can tell you there is an exciting number of things that um, people in the sector we've, 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 we've pulled their um, you know um, you know the ideas of you know what service lines can be uh, expected and so there's lots in the whole um, technology field IT field um, and there are simple services mm -hmm. that we may not have even thought about um, that you know individuals in the sector have identified as opportunities and we want you to come out to understand what those opportunities um, are, are like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes in, indeed this the, these hurricanes and, and the flood came with disastrous consequences but uh, the the silver lining is that they they could also bring uh, opportunities for persons who would like to start their own business and so on and um, that is the kind of thing we want to talk about on the the 22nd we uh, we in, in, in planning for this event we had uh, input from a number of existing companies and um, we discussed a number of, of opportunities both for employment and for self-employment and uh, we're pretty excited as I've said before about both the 1st and the 22nd of March. Fantastic. Thank you. So with that, um, if you have any questions, feel free to now go ahead. Sure. Um, this is really interesting information. Um, I'm absolutely sure there are quite a number of persons who are excited about this, but there are some some issues that persons would love to have clarifications on as it relates to one the opportunity of switching switching uh, entities from because probably of displacement wanting to go into another job how are you partnering in this instance with labor immigrations how we deal with these issues to effectively cater for all and sundry because we know for sure it's going to be an easier task or easier goal for person who have status as opposed to expatriate. So how do we deal with, deal with this for all and sundry? I don't want to get too deeply into the, 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 the legal aspects of it uh, in, in terms of, you know, the, the, the changes that, that, that have been discussed in terms of, you know, making it easier for, for people to, to, to work after the, the, the hurricanes. Uh, but I know that the Labor Department is very much involved. Um, in fact, we are working with them in terms of, of them giving us information in terms of persons who are seeking jobs and so on. So they are very much on board with us. Okay, so who are you looking forward to having at the Expo? Well, we're looking forward to having um, employers mm -hmm. who are, have um, true advertisement have indicated that they are seeking individuals to employ. Um, and we are really reaching out to members of BVI Finance, members um, of BVI Finance or people who participate in the financial services sector. We are focusing our efforts for this 
particularly Expo, on the financial services sector. Um, the idea and hope is that we will also have a similar Expo geared and aimed towards the tourism sub subsector. So we are tapping into the members of BVI Finance. Um, we've, we've done our homework by looking at individuals or companies who are, who are advertising. Um, we are approaching the members because they may have a need but have not yet advertised it um, so that we can also get those, those, those job listings. I know for myself, um, uh, we have enlisted a few jobs and we will be bringing them to the expo and I'm sure there are other people like us. Um, and so we're, we're targeting them first and then individuals who are seeking employment who are not yet currently employed, we are seeking those individuals to really come out. Um, and be a part of the expo in addition to um, people that have an idea or have thought about ways in which they can engage the, the subsector in terms of uh, services or products, we are in also inviting them to come out to, to the expo. And as Ms. Smith, Mrs. Smith says, the whole idea is recovery um, and I'm sure that, um, that the immigration and labor department um, again, because we're, we're working through them uh, in terms of identifying individuals will help to facilitate it because it's easier to have someone who is here who may have accommodation in this particular time um, to, to try and make them gainfully employed. It helps with the recovery. Every dollar that we can keep circulating helps with the recovery. And so I think that I think that I think we'll find support from, from, from that particular in, in, Indeed. Um, in fact, just after the hurricanes, uh, BVI Finance yes. uh, was gathering data That's right. in terms of, of, of jobs, accommodation. possibilities, accommodation, and so on. And uh, we know of at least uh, 15 companies uh, that are actively looking for, for staff. Um, and it's, it's a, a wonderful opportunity to really put uh, potential employees with uh, employers. So I was coming have. to that, Zan, that we very really me talk about um, do, you have done your homework and uh, um, Ms. Smith will talk about gathering data. Mm -hmm. All of this is coming out because of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. So it's possible if there was no hurricane, this would not have happened. That may be correct to assume that. Um, with UBL Financial Services, Mrs. Smith, you talk about gathering data. What what has happened? What kind of shortfall or loopholes there have been, if any, in the financial services sector as a result of people leaving, right? What sort of shortfall has been created as a result of the hurricane that makes you go in this direction to get started? Well, fortunately, this is, this is something we were planning, as, as Meet said, from, mm -hmm. from December or thereabouts. Uh, a number of people left the BVI. Uh, we believe that uh, about between 10 and, and 20 percent of the financial services industry uh, is still abroad. So most of the people have, have come back. What worked for financial services was the business continuity plans. All of the financial services uh, in, uh, firms had business continuity plans so that they could, they could perform virtually in, 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 in any country. What also worked for us was that the Financial Services Commission through Virgin stayed up. The Virgin within the Financial Services Commission stayed up. So you could operate and then the Financial Services Commission opened it or unlocked as they put it, Virgin, so you could work from a number of locations. Uh, so we always had our industry remained dynamic. Because of the fact that people lost premises, uh, because they lost, because staff had to be relocated and so, and so on, we ended up with these, these vacancies. And uh, because they're, they're about, I would say, between, in, in, in all preliminary information, would suggest that there are some, they're probably between 80 and 100 people in financial services that uh, have been displaced and uh, or you know temporarily out of jobs and that's why we're putting this expo together to bring the employers potential employers and the employees together and there may be some people who 
who may decide that they want to work for themselves. And, and, and why not? Uh, as as Meet said, there might be opportunities now in in, in IT. There mm -hmm. there might be opportunities in in, in security, physical security. Mm -hmm. There could be opportunities in any number of areas. Even delivery of 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 food, delivery of of items that the industry industry needs. There are all these opportunities. So that if I don't want, if I no longer this, if I decide that I no longer want to to work. For, for a person, I could become self-employed, and it was it's it's one of the reasons why we decided to to go with one person who's made a success of being self-employed, uh, and 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 just to show that it's it's not something that's impossible. It would be correct to assume that these opportunities were not there prior to the hurricane. I would and, these are, and there, there are no opportunities following the hurricane. There are always, Zan, there are always opportunities. Well, the opportunities you spoke about, they outline a number of these areas. They, they, not in the same numbers, let's say that. Uh, we would not have been. The BVI has uh, made in terms of unemployment. We've one of the, mm -hmm. the we have the one of the lowest levels of unemployment in the in the Caribbean. And um, so it, it is fair to say that because of the hurricane, a number of people became displaced. And in the short term, and I stress short term, we find ourselves with a number of people who are unemployed. But we, we are confident that these people will find employment uh, very soon. And that's why we put it together this expo. And to be, to be right to assume that these vacancies that you are filling are vacancies that were held by other people who have left, and you have uh, you are sure they are not coming back to fill those positions. Uh, let me be very clear. It's not that I did say that the industry has remained pretty dynamic. Uh, people are hiring, in some instances, people are hiring new people, more people. So it's not always that people have left. So it's just to replace people. The industry has 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 continued. In fact, it was interesting in terms of even the, the number of, of new incorporations for, for this quarter, this last quarter compared to, to, to the year before. It, it, it remained pretty steady. So people continue to, to grow in financial services. Okay. Are there any guarantees? I uh, know, for instance, their, their previous uh what you call it, expos where people go register and you say we're we'll gonna get back to you, you may get the job do come forward but persons don't actually get those jobs who register during the expo. Are there any systems in place to ensure that priorities are set for the persons who might have been seen fit and would have attended the expo to get into jobs? Well I don't think we can ever say there's a guarantee. Um, but I think any reasonable thinking employer, if he finds the right person, um, that company finds the right person, will hire them. Um, it's got to be better than um, trying to bring someone from overseas and find housing in this particular marketplace. Um, so I think people can be assured, um, I'm going to be a potential employer or a firm is going to be a potential. And if we find the right people, we will hire them. Um, and to answer um, you know, the question that, was, that, was, that Zan raised, there are a number of employees who left because of their children. Um, the school system was impacted, mm. we know, and they have made a decision to leave because of the education of their children. And some of those individuals are not returning for that specific reason. Um, but in the meantime, companies must function. They must deliver the service that Lorna is talking about because I think, um, um, you know, um, we, are, we are very thankful that the financial services sector did not suffer as bad. It weathered the hurricane reasonably well. Um, and so um, business is, is, is continuing and companies must service that business, not so much in terms of, um, you know, trying to keep themselves, but in terms of competing against other jurisdictions, in terms of just making sure that their clients' uh, activities are serviced in a, in a, in a proper way. So uh, I think that there's real opportunity. It's not fake. It's real. Um, I think that's, you know, we hear a lot about fake news lately. Let me just <laughs> put that there. Yeah. Uh, we're not here. We're not, it's not a show. I think that there's some real opportunities. 
And I think I would want people to come out and explore what those opportunities are. And I think that the employers who come would be genuinely looking for individuals who are qualified to fill those positions. I believe it to be correct to assume, judging from what you said, when you said that um, um, Mr. Smith said that the financial services remain steady. Yes. Uh, you also said um, they did not suffer. Right. Um, during the it, weathered, it weathered hurricane armor relatively well. And that's a fact. So you're changing the statement that they did not suffer. <laughs> well, I didn't say they didn't suffer. I said it weathered hurricane armor relatively, um, reasonably well. And it, and it did. And that's just the facts. Okay, that, but in light of that, um, most of the persons who left yes. are persons who are not the Islanders. They are persons from overseas, um, expatriates. So they left, as you said, to, went to get the children back into school. As you go along this program, right, will you be taking um, a very close look on persons who you employ? Right, just in case, God forbid, you find this type in another situation where they may have to go. We know that you'll be more focusing on your local people. Priority now will be given to your local people because regardless of what you say, how steady could have been and whether they not suffer, it created some hardship in the financial services with those people leaving. Yes. So to avoid it happening again, will you be looking very closely at who you employ? Well, um, well a number of things. Um, number, number one is that uh, we will not dictate, we will not be dictating who employers hire. The employers will make their own individual assessments. But you think they need to do this, right? Um, and and they, will, they will hire the persons that are best qualified. And I think that's important. Um, we want to match skill sets with opportunity. Um, and so I didn't say that uh, we ex there's no exclusion of anyone. Um, come with your skills, come with your, your best game on, Whoever you are, uh, wherever you're from, and, ho and, and let's hope we get matches that, 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 that satisfy both. I think that's, that's very important, important to say. Um, I think, yes, there was, there was displacement, but as Mrs. Smith said, most of the people that left actually come back. And I think it's, it all goes well for the BVI. Um, you know, I hear people say that they went to Cayman, and yet Cayman have some things that we don't have. But but Cayman and BVI, you know, it, it you know, or hills, or or natural beauty, or, or or atmosphere, who we be is not Cayman, and I think people have come back to that and have gravitated towards it, and I would venture to say that as we get going and start the engines going, more people will come back, and I think even additional ones will come to the BVI because we are trying to move the economy. Forward. Uh, I need to be careful how I speak, but I think the effort here is to try and move the economy forward and to make the BVI better and stronger. Um, and I think the financial services sector is taking the lead because, in terms of taking a hit as a result of Arma, it's took it the best um, when you compare it to the to the tourism subsector. So it's taking the lead. That's why we're trying to do this first and then have uh, the tourism subsector come up behind it. Okay, quickly, finally from me, uh, what is the ratio, if you have that, of uh, new businesses that would have come as opposed to those who did not come back? When you say new businesses that would have come, tell me. Were there new businesses that emerged after Irma during the past six months? And can you compare it to the numbers that would have left but did not return? Uh, I, I don't have those statistics. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, have, don't have those statistics, statistics either. What but were they? They, but they I were think, no, 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 Kathy, yeah. they, were mainly, uh, they were mainly existing businesses we're talking about. They, a lot of people, that's why I was talking about the business continuity plans. A number of people went to, to Cayman. I, I know of one company that, that went to St. Lucia. For, they took most of their, their people to St. Lucia. They're back here now. Uh, Cayman took up a large number of people. Bermuda took people. Uh, some people Curacao. went to Curacao yeah. and um, the Channel Islands, London, and but they're back. That was the point I, I made. Mm -hmm. I made first. We we may not have all the accommodation, um, but uh, it's 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 coming back. Uh, some people are doubling up. Uh, for instance, we ourselves are sharing with Bank of Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, me, you might have some people, have in, people, your in, have people in your office. I have people in our offices. Yes. Uh, People have walkers, have people in their office. Um, 
people are just sharing offices, but they're they're back. They're coming back in in, in large part. They're they're mostly back. Uh, in fact, they had given themselves up to most most businesses had given themselves up to the the end of March to be back, and um, and there's every, every every indication that 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 will be met. So to answer your question, that that deadline. To answer your question, we're not really talking about new new businesses right now. We need new businesses, yes, and we're working on that as a different project. Uh, you know, with things like a, a limited partnership act and other things that we in BVI Finance are doing. But right now, we're looking at employment and and making sure that we get back up to that level of employment. This. Sana, I'll give you the last question. <laughs> this is not the first time the financial services is saying that people need to get involved. They need to get local people, and it took almost for you to do that, right? What it, it, oh, in terms of to look for opportunities to have a job fair. That's Just a minute, what, what, I what, have what, to correct it, that question. It never happened. At, at, let me correct you. Mead said quite specifically, in we're the looking for people. It's not just, it's okay. not, yes, BVI Islanders are always our focus because BVI Islanders are the priority. But we're not just, as, as he said, whoever you are, come to the job fair. I agree. So they it's need, not just about BVI I agree. Islanders. You can come to the job fair, but determines what happened there. There was no, um, Mead said there'll be no exclusion. He said that, right. right. There'll be yes. no exclusion. But despite what both of you said, um, hardships were created when people left, right? And those people left because they're not the Islanders. You said also, because they're going back to take the children to school and so on, but in the interest of the financial Sorry. services, in the interest, in the interest of the financial services, you said um, the employers will be there and people, they'll be interviewing people. Would you advise them? Or will you be in any position to advise them? Or you, uh, you think they should be cautioned in terms of who? Who you take at this time in light of the fact that they're looking to focus on the development of the lo of local people? Would you advise them where while they may have the criteria, why they may have the quality, the qualifications? Don't you think it will be a right thing for them to do? I, I offer no line? such caution. <laughs> no. Good caution. I offer no such caution. Neither do I. I think I think I think I, look, I think what we should do is um, I think everyone is served best if we can match people with skill sets that businesses need. Everyone is served. Um, and that's why we made sure that this expo was not just based on jobs, but also based on entrepreneurship. So it's not just what you can bring in terms of employment, but what you can bring in terms of skills and services and products to the industry. Um, and so, I encourage you to, to, to bring your best game. If the best game that you have is to seek employment, bring that best game. If the best game you have is you have a wonderful idea and you want to explore that within the financial services sector, bring, that, bring your best game there. If you have products and services that you think for at some point was of interest to the industry, I would say bring, bring that to, to this expo. And then let's explore the idea. Um, one of the things that I think Mrs. Smith and the BVI finance team is committed to is bringing out the members, their members that can make decisions so that when you get to the job fair, you know, you're, you're there hopefully with some decision makers that can make your idea come to reality or the job that you're looking for a reality. And so that's, that's what we're going to and, try and And do. indeed, just to close, that's, that's, that's why we partnered uh, to partner with, with, with me to get the the expo going because we have about um, 80 plus members yes. uh, who many of whom are very keen 80, uh, members meaning firms who are pretty keen on working with us to make this a reality and success all right thank you all very much um, mr malone just made an appeal to entrepreneurs and unemployed individuals to come out with their best game. Um, just for the record, Ms. Smith, if I can just ask you to make an appeal to the firms as well um, to follow up in terms of um, registering for the Expo and other Yes, firms. absolutely, uh, especially <coughs> on, the, on the 22nd, um, 
please come out and 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 work with us we're going to give you more information uh, as members about the, the 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 actual day what will happen on the 22nd but it's only going to be a success if you as members of BVI finance come out and and support the event so please please come out and if you have any questions uh, please call us at BVI Finance and be happy to uh, answer those questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, buddy.